Well, good morning. Please pass your cards inside out. We picked up at this time. Hope everyone is doing well. There's one other announcement to make, and that is you still have time to give me a gift. <laughs> so I'm really depending on a lot of you here, okay? And uh, don't make me cry. So just teasing. We begin today. I thought it would be very appropriate to uh, speak today about one new man, and there's a specific reason why. And <clears throat> there's a, a lot is said this time of year about the birth of Christ, even though we have no idea on what day or month that he was actually born. Uh, We know that um, during that time, the Bible does tell us that uh, their shepherds were in the fields. We know that. And so the thinking is, is more like March or April, somewhere along that way. But what I wanted to get to today was simply this. We are often neglect and all our conversation about Jesus, about why he came to earth. What was the purpose? Now, all of us understand that on this earth, we're going to all be born. That's part of the incarnation of Christ coming in the flesh. But why was it that Jesus came to this earth? I think it'd be a great misnomer for us just to uh, think about one thing and not think about, encapsulate the whole idea of Christ Jesus and he's coming here. And there was a reason, Ephesians chapter 2, 13 through 15, where God says, and we're going to revisit this, but now, and I want you to see this, in Christ Jesus. You see it? It's going to be a recurring theme that we're going to see this morning. In Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So I'm just what Paul says, church at Ephesus. You who later would leave your first love, but now you're right with Almighty God. I want you to see this. That those who are in Christ Jesus now, the reason you are where you are is because of the blood of Christ. And it's because of the blood of Christ that you're no longer far off. They say one time they were aliens. He says, for he himself is our peace, who has made us both, watch, one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Talking about Jew and Gentile. Jesus Christ, the incarnation. The birth of Jesus Christ. Being born, according to Isaiah 7, 14, of a virgin. Micah 5 and verse 2, around Bethlehem. Why is this? All these 333 supposedly prophecies concerning Christ in the Old Testament. Why are they there to lead us to this point? In all of this, the old man that used to be there under the Jewish system, the old man that used to be there in the patriarchal age, God was saying, I need a new man. And it's only going to happen through the blood of Jesus. So he made one, has broken down this wall of hostility, verse 15. How did he do it? By abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, the law of Moses, that he might create in himself. One new man in place of the two, so making peace. Now, as we continue to to study this, there are two creations spoken about in Scripture with which God is involved. Number one is the idea of the material creation where God created, you know, our world, the universe, and and, uh, since then, nothing else has uh, been created, as far as I know, not by God in that material sense. Uh, also, you know, created us, of course, uh, again, in a material sense. The other creation is what happens when someone comes to Christ honestly and sincerely. And I want to underscore, underline that idea of honestly and sincerely. Because that's when the new happens. It's when the one new man comes about. It's when Christ's purpose is fulfilled. Whenever we let go of all those old things, all those old ways, we're going to see that, we put that to death. And we finally, once and for all in our life, say this. You know, Father, I finally get it. That being a child of God is so much more involved than I ever thought. That your desire for me was not just that I attend services. We talked about that in class this morning. 
that a lot of times we talk about, I get phone calls, you know, from people that have uh, uh, left here and gone, moved into another area, and uh, a person to call up, which is quite common, and say someone has requested to place membership with us, and we like to know if they were faithful members of the church while they were there. Now, what they mean by that is, were they faithful in attendance? And you and I both know that you can have someone sitting in services every single worship time and leave here and be more like, like the devil than they are like Christ. Right? And so just sitting here is not the only thing that we're supposed to do. It is absolutely necessary that we attend the services. I want us to understand that. But I put here, honestly and sincerely, that's the other creation, because unless we're honest and sincere, and honest and sincerely seeking to change according to what Scripture says, we're still the old man. So, those are the two ideas of creation. The other thing I want us to see today is 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19, where the Word of God says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, there's that term again, he is a new creation. I go over that a lot, the word new, kainos, like something never been seen before. The old has passed away. And I want you to notice this. This is a challenge to all of us here in attendance today. How do we know that we're a new creation? Because the old's passed away. What do you mean about the old? I mean those old habits. Old vocabulary. The old ways of life that led you down a wrong path. Those things about which in all of our lives we know we're weak. I can't be involved in that because it's too much of a temptation. I can't be there. I can't run around with this person. I can't, I can't do all of these things. He says, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I did the word new again. All this is from God who through Christ, notice through Christ, reconciled us to him and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. To reconcile means to make friends again. Why is it that Jesus was born on this earth in the first place? To reconcile us to God. So we would be friends again. As one man said, Jesus on the cross, as though he's reaching up one hand to heaven to take hold of the hand of God and reaching the other hand down from the cross to take a hold of the hand of man and to make friends again, to reconcile us to him. And so thus to make peace. Verse 19, that is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Every time I read that, I want to shout hallelujah. What was the purpose of this? He says, I want to make friends again. I want you to be friends with God. I want you to become a new person like it's never been seen before. And I want to do this because I don't want to count your trespasses against you and watch the last part of this. And entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Boy, I like that. Reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. But all this was contingent upon a couple of things. Number one, being a new man only happens for those in Christ. Now, I know there are a lot of things out there and a lot of pressures that are there. And uh, Brother Tim may have mentioned this earlier this morning. Uh, Vicky and I uh, used to watch Duck Dynasty. We, we stopped watching that. I'm not condemning you if you do. But we stopped watching because it got a little risque for us. You know, we didn't, we didn't like some of the things that were going on. But be that as it may, when a man comes out and he's asked a question and he responds to that, honest way, I may have been a little crude. You know, I'll go out and read it. It was a little crude. But still yet, he was responding to a question, and then all of a sudden, the gay and lesbian world gets upset, and the, the number one show on television, they want to cancel. And I have a sneaky suspicion A&E needs them more than they need A&E. But the point being in all that, I honestly hope the Robertsons have the gumption to simply say, all of us quit. We're going to take our stand. And if they begged them to come back, said, sorry, Kemosabe, we're not coming back. I think it's time the world gets a message, don't you? And I may not be able to give that message because of who I am and the small environs and environment of which I exist. I can get the message here. 
But they have an opportunity, a great opportunity. We're going to stand for Almighty God. We're going to watch and see what happens. I have a sneaky feeling they're going to do the right thing. I really do. And so we look at all this, and sometimes we get the world backward. Gay and lesbian community trying to preach to us about what being in Christ is all about. Did you get that? Real Christians do this. Real Christians embrace this idea and are tolerant. Have you figured out yet that it's only the Christians in this world that are supposed to be tolerant? I've kind of gotten that message. You know what tolerant means? Shut your mouth. That's what it means. Have a blank stare, blinders on your eyes, just keep quiet. Word of God, I read, says being a new man only happens for those who are in Christ. That means those who have been obedient to Him. Being a new creation only happens for those who are in Christ. Not in Christ, there isn't anything new about your life. You're not in Christ, it's impossible to be a new man. Now we need to focus on the common thread being mentioned here and the common thread that should appeal to our common sense about this is the starting over word, meaning new. I don't know how much better it could ever be put in Scripture than for Jesus Christ, you know, to go on a cross for us, to die the horrific death, and say, let me tell you why I'm doing this. It's so that you can start again. I know that your life's a mess. And where you're heading is not where you really want to go. I told you before about Vicki and I driving back one time from, uh, (laughs) I don't think even Brad and Christy know this, but since they're here, I'll let them in. Coming back one time, I believe it was from Brad and Christy's. And uh, they were, um, anyway, wherever it was, and Vicki was giving me directions, and I basically told her she didn't know what she was talking about. I'm man. Hear me roar. I, a man, we we're born with directional senses. Right? She said, over there, said, okay, you're on your own, buddy. You know, the way wives say it. So I got on a, a turnpike, and I said, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going the wrong way. No kidding. <laughs> I said, well, hon, I'll turn around the next exit. 35 miles later... We got to turn around, you know, and she said, boy, I I enjoyed this flat scenery we've been watching all the, you know, uh, so we think we're headed, well, I'm heading the wrong direction. See, there I was, and that's that's the main thing, there I was, and, you know, it's like I I told you about being in neutral, and people living their lives in neutral. There I was in an automobile that had an engine to take me where I needed to go. I was sheltered from the rain, from the heat, from the cold. I'm in a place with someone I love dearly. We had the ability to be on the right track, but my sense of direction took us down a wrong road. And I pray and pray all the time, Lord, help me always understand, to be able to discern the Scriptures, that I understand the common thread in your Scripture is about me starting over again, and starting over again means I follow your rules, go down the road you set, and understand that of Jesus. John 14 and verse 6 is the way, the truth, and the life. He knows the direction I should be going. Amen? And the Bible says in Jeremiah 10 and verse 29, it's not in man who walks to direct his own steps. I need direction, and I need help. So... We look at this and we understand this idea of being new. We come to the Lord and we come to Him according to the scripture of Isaiah or Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. I'll get to Isaiah later on maybe. It says, to put off your old self. Now that's who we happen to be. Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupting through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. So you're going to have to stop thinking like you're thinking. Be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on, watch, the new self. How do I do that? You know, the Bible talks in Galatians chapter 3 how we're baptized into Christ, we're clothed with Him. That's the beginning. We're clothed with Christ, putting on the new. It says, renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, watch, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Holiness from the word hagios, meaning to be separate. 
So we're being created after true righteousness, that from the Word of God, that which only comes through Christ, and in the separation of ourselves from the world and from ourselves so we can have purity and holiness and godliness. It says, you want to have a new man? Get away from you. Lord, what do I have to put to death? Whatever's standing in your way. But you don't understand. I, I have my best friend out there. Uh, been my best friend since, since third grade or first grade or since birth, whatever the case might be. Is that person and they being around you bringing you farther away from Christ or closer to Christ? Who are you and what are you all about? So we see all of this, and it's a great challenge. You know, as we look at these things, there has always been a specific reason why God shows us mercy. I want us to look at 1 Peter, please, verses 3 through 4. Specific reason, watch this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to His great mercy. Now watch carefully. According to His great mercy, He has caused in the ESV, NIV says, has given, but he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now watch again. All those naysayers and Christ haters, all those people that think that Jesus Christ was not who Jesus Christ really is. It says here, has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. The Bible says the only way we have a living hope, the only way it can be done again, if one doesn't be born again, it hasn't been born again, there is no hope because there's no resurrection power in their lives. Now you think about that. In order for me to have hope, there has to be that resurrection power in my life, and the only way that's going to happen is through being born again. Now, that's becoming new. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again, or given us the power, if you will, to be born again. God's mercy gives us the chance to start anew with our sins being forgiven. Now, there's beauty in this. You know, as we look at Scripture, 1 Peter 1, 22-23, watch this. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, in other words, you can't segue yourself out of this. You aren't someone that's so important that you can <clears throat> gain entrance into heaven by being disobedient to God that the same rules that apply for Jack Smith to be saved are the same rules that apply for you to be saved. And the same rules that apply for people of the churches of Christ happen to be the same rules that apply to people of any belief around the world. That all of us are to be in obedience to the same gospel. Paul said that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 about verse 10. He told the church at Corinth, he says, I want there to be no divisions among you. He went on to say that you be of the same mind and the same thought. I want you to think the same things and speak the same things when it comes to Scripture. Then in Ephesians chapter 4, Paul went on to say, in verses 4 through 7, seven different ones, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one hope, you know, all the ones that happen to be there. He says, there's reasons why I'm telling you this. Then the Bible tells us, in Acts 2 and verse 47, that all those people that were obedient to the truth in Acts chapter 2, God did something for them that we don't do. We don't join anything, church. People ask all the time, how do I join your church? Well, two things are, number one, it's not my church. Well, aren't you the pastor? No. I'm the preacher here. Our pastors are our elders. And we don't join anything. Well, how is that possible? Then how do you become a member? Because we follow what the Word of God says. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. The Word of God tells us we need to repent and be baptized for the mission of our sins. Verse 47 says, And God, or the Lord, added to the church daily such as were being saved. Notice when they were added after their obedience. Notice who added them. 
Notice there wasn't a single vote taken as to who was ready or not, as to who was, who was uh, perfect enough, or who was good enough to be. God just took all that out of our hands. Look about verse 23. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God, it's great to know that both of those things, both of those descriptive ideas and terms, that God's word is alive. And um, 1 John 2 and verse 6, if we say we abide in Christ, we ought to walk as he walked. So all these things are there for us. Becoming a new creation doesn't happen accidentally. Some people live as though it does. It happens through the obedience to the truth. Uh, we are born again through the living and abiding word. We just read that. It is the word of God that is the truth. And John 17, 15 through 17, Jesus said, I do not ask that you take them out of the world. Father, I know that they have to endure this world. They have to endure the strain. There are going to be trials and tribulations. There are going to be difficult times. But in all of this, the challenge is still there. They can become a new person if they want to. So my prayer is not for you to take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Father, it's coming. Parents look into the eyes of their children, and you know it's coming. They come from little kittelopes, you know, that are, that, that, are the, that innocent age, and they grow up, and you know sooner or later that battle's coming between them and Satan. And you know, one of, one of these days they're going to be responsible for our kids and our grandkids. They're going to be responsible for the decisions they make. And all of us wonder, sometimes through tears, have I instilled within my children enough to survive the onslaughts I know is coming? Because it's not going to be easy. Am I the man God would have me to be? Am I the woman God would want me to be? Together are we the team. Because our children are looking and they're seeing and their, their minds are being modeled after the moms and dads they see at home. Are we what we're supposed to be? So you look at all these things and, and you ask, they are not of the world, verse 16, just as I am not of the world. And he says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Now the truth, of course, is the word of God. Sanctify again is a root form of that word, hagios, meaning to separate or to set apart. Now, there's something else we need to understand. Being a new man involves something known as a decision or a beginning point. That's right now. This hour. Don't be afraid. I remember one time going to the doctor with my youngest daughter, who is here this morning, and uh, something about her voice, I believe it was your voice, and I had hurt my back. You remember this? We went to the doctor. Sometimes you're prepared for things, sometimes you're not. And there we were, and she could barely talk, but she had some school function, and she had to get right. So the doctor comes in, and and uh, she had told me before we went in there, boy, I don't want to get a shot. She doesn't like shots. And I told her, you know, sh shots aren't bad. Don't worry about a shot. If you have to have a shot, just get a shot. I don't like shots, Dad. You're going to have to man up, get a shot. So at that time, we had gone to Dr. Hell, and he came in and uh, looked at her and listened to her and said, you need a shot. And what does my loving daughter do but look at him and say, my dad's got to hurt back. He needs a shot, too. Dr. Hell said, I'll get him a shot too. Thanks a lot, baby duck. I just appreciate that so much. Man up, you know. Sometimes we see things coming. A beginning point, the point to that illustration is this. Sometimes getting well is going to be a little painful. Amen? Sometimes the Word of God kind of sticks us, doesn't it? You know, sometimes we look at that and we look at the prognosis of where we are right now if we don't change versus the prognosis if we do change and we see the reason behind why we need to change. But there has to be a beginning point. We need to begin somewhere. The second thing is a determination, a staying power. I'm not only going to begin with this, I'm going to stay with this. Lord, I've seen too many Christian people that have begun with Almighty God 
and walk away for whatever the reason is. And Father, I've never heard a good reason. Never ever heard a good reason for walking away from God. I've heard a lot of them. A lot of excuses, but never a reason. Not one that God would accept. And the third thing here, a dedication, a perpetual will. I want to be determined, a staying power, and I want to be dedicated to this perpetually. I'm not going to give in. Remember, I've told you now for years, for years, and for years what the rules for success happen to be. If you don't know them by now, I'll tell you next time. There are three rules for, for success. I'll tell you right now. Three rules for success. Remember what they are? Anybody remember? Rule number one. You ready? Don't get sidetracked. What's rule number two? Don't get sidetracked. What's rule number three? Don't get sidetracked. Well, you catch on quickly. Here we go. Now watch this. Galatians 6, 14 through 15, and we're going to close this Lord's Day morning. Being one new man, being one new person is obviously a fantastic challenge all of us face. But watch. Paul wrote the church at Galatia steeped in trouble. Someone who happened to be running the race well and someone had interfered with that running. Someone who Galatians 3 and verse 1 had given them the evil eye. They were those, Galatians 1, 6, through about verse 9, that we're looking after another gospel, which really wasn't another gospel at all. And Paul says this. He says, But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Paul says, As I became a child of God, the world wants nothing to do with me. And I want nothing to do with the world. Then he goes on and he says, for neither circumcision, being a Jew, counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, being a Gentile, it doesn't count for anything. Being born into this world doesn't mean you have a silver spoon or a direct place going to heaven. Just because you're born in this world doesn't mean that you're necessarily anything that's going to last. Because sooner or later, Accountability is going to come. He says, neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. So let me tell you what counts in this old world. It's not looking back on your ancestor because you can't borrow their faith. It's understanding that if you want to get higher than where you are right now, it's going to be through changing becoming one new creation. Man, that's man, woman, boy, girl. New like it's never been seen before. And it cannot happen without being in Christ Jesus. Now church, there are two passages of scripture that tell us how to get into Christ Jesus. Both those are found in the New Testament, of course. Romans 6, 3 and 4. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. And those both tell us that we're baptized into Christ. I didn't make that up. Read it for yourself. Both places, baptized into Christ. So how is it one gets into Christ Jesus? Through baptism. How does one stay faithful? Through the Word. Why is it so important about baptism? Because in baptism we contact the blood of Jesus. Why is that so important? Because it's through the blood of Jesus we are redeemed, Ephesians 1 and verse 7. It's through the blood of Jesus that you know, we have salvation, 2 Timothy 2 and verse 10. It's through the blood of Jesus that without it there be no remission of sins, Hebrews 9 and verse 22. It's through the blood of Christ that our robes are washed white, Revelation 7 and verse 14. We go on and on and on. But if you want to start new, there's only one way, and it's with Christ Jesus. If you have need to respond, won't you come as we stand and sing?